Well, welcome to the New Fish YouTube channel and welcome to episode one of the vlog, the New Fish vlog. I'm Joy Karras and you join me today at the beautiful Packington Summers Fishery. We're on the Molens Pool today and I'm joined by the gaffer, Mick Viles. He's just over there getting set up now. And we're gonna just have a lovely day's fishing and that's what this vlog's all about. We're gonna to go to different places, try different tactics, different methods, try and catch some different fish, but also have a look at the fishing we've been doing of late, the results we've been getting of late, talking about tactics, talking about what's upcoming, talking a little bit about new fish, we might even look at some upcoming products, stuff that we've got in the pipeline, stuff that we're working on even. So just a really, really general day's fishing where we can have a little chat about everything that's happening here at New Fish. So without further ado, let's get on the box and catch a load of fish. Right, so first thing we're gonna do, have a little look at what Mick's up to. So I've got my roving camera. How are we doing, sir? I'm all right, mate, how are you? Yeah, absolutely great. First episode of the vlog. Well, that's good, because it's first my first ever time on Moreland's. Hey, oh, oh, no. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, a, that's perfect, that, because I was just saying to you, Joe, weren't I? I've just picked up this um, new bait up feeder, which I've slid onto my Let's have stem. a little look, let's have a little look. In look, I've just slid him onto my stem, and I'm having a go. It's my, it's my first go, William. Let's go, with a new Preston bait. There's, like all things, there's obviously a knack. Yep. And it's all about the squeeze. It's all about the squeeze. So that is one of their new ICS bait ups. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm using a stem and I thought, well, I'll try it. And I've just got a second swim. Oh, that's better. It's just a bit short, Joe, because I'm frightened of chucking it. But <laughs> that's what it's all about today. Getting, getting to grips with it. And yeah, that's emptied. So I've just started to fish a couple of method lines and I've fed a nice little I've seen you. Margin oh, line. I've gone straight look, in. Look, look. Yeah. It's fizzing. There's fish all over the place. Do you know what? But I think they're starting to spawn. They're having a spawn, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're having a go. They're, um, we've had this long, cold spring and it has been dragged on because we're in May. And um, But the weather's come and it's water's warming up and I think I've seen, uh, we're trying to work out what they are, if they're bream or whether they look like F1s and they're all rubbing up and they're up over in that, that grass there. So. The sign that springs true on its way, you can hear all the birds and leaves are coming out. So what do this you think is starting to feed. This is a nice bit of lake, isn't it? It's fantastic because there's plenty of water and as you know me, Joe, I like I like room to be able to fish. I can't stand tiny little in close uh, waters and this has got some distance to it. And they're having a go over there, look. Yeah, yeah. It's, they're See, unbelievable. There's loads of fish cleaning off in reeds, which obviously we've had this last couple of days it's been really warm, but we only had frost last week, didn't we? Yeah. We went out last they're obviously busting now, aren't they? Fish Tuesday. are busting to get... Yeah, because I think they're held back. The winter, they wait, they wait, they wait, and then all of a sudden they want to feed, and they had a little feed a month ago, then it went cold. Last Tuesday we went out up to Edawash Canal. I'm, I'm going to call it our first failed filming episode. Yeah, we had a bit of a failure, didn't we? Yeah, we it's did. It's not all right, it's not... No, no, it's not as easy as it looks. Never worked with animals and children. Um, we've not tried working with children yet, but I think we'll avoid it. I don't know, you work with one here. Well, yeah, there's been a few knocking about. Um, <laughs> And um, it were an hard frost, and it made fishing really hard. But since then, it's warm, the warm evenings, fish are feeding, there's been some massive weights coming out across, across the country. Mm. Um, but especially here, I think they were matching last night, weren't they? Yeah, 150 pounds, Sam Brown, Sam Brown won it. Yeah, and there were loads of like... Backup weight. Yeah, I think 80 pounds, tip of back type. It's thing, almost, so. this is the commercial lake, but it's almost like a natural lake in that it's ta quite temperamental. Moody Molens, it's the nickname. Is that, is that what they call it? Moody Molens. It's my first visit, so I'm learning. Because it's a, you know, it's a great big venue. We're on a good peg today. Good. I'm on 44, Mick's yeah. on 45. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, Scarecrow Point. Scarecrow Point. I didn't know if that were referring to me or that lad Do you know what I've just seen on Scarecrow, Mick? What? A blue tip building his nest in Scarecrow. Oh, really? look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, Mick, that's That's, that's where we want him, at the side of that grass there, look. Coming back with grass stains on. Yeah. As you keep saying. Yeah, it's got to come back with grass stains. Yeah, that one empty as well, isn't it? Well, we're, we're getting the squeeze out. That was the best, best cash yet, that was, wasn't it? And what you've got to do is not be frightened of making a mistake. I learned that years ago. Keep trying. If at first you don't succeed, and I'm just squeezing a few micros and a few fours that I've damped off, but it's just about gaining enough enough to get there. We had them raining down on top of me. Oh, oh there you go. Not, not hard enough. Not no, hard no. enough. Let's have, I'm going to come round and have a look at the squeeze. We're going to get it. There's obviously, there's obviously a knack to it. No, there is, there is. So I'm filling it with eights. Putting eights in here. Yeah. yeah, I tried it with that ground bait at first, because I'll just use a bit of ground bait. Because this, this Bosch's sort of approach is... 
is a really good one in places, isn't it? It can be, yeah. yeah. Um, decoy, where we were recently. So I think the, the trick is the amount of pellet that you put in the amount of space you leave yourself, because of course if you have to squeeze them too hard, mm. then they don't come out. Um, if you don't squeeze them hard enough, you finish them with them down back in it, like <laughs> I've just done twice on camera. This should be a what's and all, Joe, because of course what we're saying is, nobody's perfect. It? No, it yeah. happens. Yeah, bang it side it reads. That was good, that one. But I'm going to leave it, see if it just soaks off and... Get a yolk. Yeah. Empty? Yeah. So it's, it's all about, the, I think, not about the squeeze. Let, let's get technical. It's not about the squeeze, it's about... Do you know what I love about this? Go on. People would be like, why aren't you using a new fish feeder? Well, because I'm trying this one, because it fits on my elasticated stem and it's a product that you can buy off the shelf. And let's be fair, um, anybody who says that they only use one brand of fishing tackle is an absolute liar. <laughs> yeah. And um, We're not about that, are we? No, 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 it's real. It's real. We're real fishermen who do real things. And um, where we've designed our own products and we think it's right for the job, it's fit for purpose and it's the tool for the job, we use it. And well, you have not, actually got a smooth round there. Which, yeah, which, which would I'm, actually be quite nice for feeding ground bait and stuff. Yeah, if I, and if I were feeding micros, I'd probably use that. But I'm trying to feed these eight mils um, because apparently that's the game here. So it's about the amount you put in because it's very tempting to do that. What, load it right load up? Load it right up. But the trouble with that is then you can only get a few pellets on and you have to squeeze it really hard. Then it won't come, it won't out, come out, which is no good. So, I mean, I'm talking to you so I know what I'm doing, but I've only just got no, this out. I've only just got it out of the packet. And then that allows me to put a few more in, which then I can squeeze and they're a bit higher up. And I think that's the game. But we're learning on the elf. Not like putting yourself in the spotlight, is no, it? No, no, no. And a nice oh, gentle lob. Yeah. And off he goes. And away he goes. Happy. And then... So you're not using a specialist rod or anything? It's just your normal 10-foot? No, I just cooked it onto my 10-foot. This, uh, this is a 10-foot superior. Now they come. So, so you got the knack of it, Yeah, they work, yeah. Learning on the it, job. You've got to learn on the job. Right, so, rather than yeah. talk about tactics now, yeah. I'll whiz around on my box. Uh -huh. we'll have, should we have a little fish and a little chat about what we've been up to? Yeah, let's see if we can catch a few. Sure. Why not? Oh. Why not? I'm going to uh, chuck my method back to my other line, where I've been pinging a few um, pellets and stuff, and yeah, oh, right. get yourself comfy. Should I get comfy? Right, we're on. So, Mick, Molens, how are you, how are you going about it? First well, thing I'm doing, I'm getting brew on. I won't, I won't lie to you. I, um, when you said we're coming, obviously I don't know about it. I've realised it's your favourite peg. In fact, somebody told me that you'd paid council tax on that peg. Um, so I rang our local expert, Phil Canny, and he said, um, you want to be getting grass stains up back of your feeder, up against the island. They're sometimes catching a waggler as tight over as you can fish it. And if you can find three foot in the edge, you might be able to catch later on because it's quite a clear venue. Um, that's because it's big, lots of water. Yeah. Um, he said it might not be easy to catch. Oh, I thought that were on then, Joe. It was dragging me rod in. Obviously, other one's back. Um, well, get a toe round, did you? Yeah, yeah. And it, I'd had a little, lovely little indication before it. I thought he'd picked it up. Swam off with it, not. I were a bit premature. Um, yeah, so he said that you could probably catch short. Um, so I've been a bit giddy and I've already fed it because you never know. Once we get doing some other bits and bobs later on, I might not get the chance. So that's me sort of three pronged attack. Bit lazy, um, but why not? It's a nice day. We're here to enjoy ourselves. It's not a race. We're having a little chit chat and uh, and a fish. What about yourself? What are you up to? I'll tell you what I'm up to. We fished the commercial national at the weekend. So I've got more bait left over because I bought six pints of casters and six pints of maggots for that match. Right. And I used about 10 of each. Brilliant. So rather than waste them, I brought them with me today and I'm going to loose feed casters at like 13 metres. Yeah. You never know, might cast some shallow. Who knows? I think it'd be an afternoon job though. So I'm just gonna, they're a bit pongy these casters, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're downwind. And um, so feed some casters. I'm trying to get my eight mils across, but I've got to be honest, I'm failing a bit at the minute. 
I mean... Yeah, it's, there's a bit of a breeze coming through. I've got that, a lovely uh, line at about three quarters where the pellets are going. Yeah. So what you're telling me is you'll be fishing pellet wagger at three quarters away across yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. At the moment. Yeah. And it were always in your plan, you were just bluffing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm starting on a method across there. Brilliant. It is a lovely chuck, isn't it? How wide is that, mate? 28, I think that that is 24 metres with my estimated bionic height. I always think it's wider than it looks, this place, because when you put your pole out, your pole's not even a third of the way across. <laughs> yeah. Well, we might be able to have a measure later, just out of interest, because if we're going to start throwing facts around about how wide it is, and we're guessing... I start throwing some facts around. Well, I'm sure we'll have somebody saying, no, it looks wider. In fact, I've just seen a fish swim past me there, Joe. Um, it looks wider, it looks 30 metres to me. We'll have all that, won't we? So we'll probably measure it later. I definitely think my peg's wider than yours. Well, that's because I ran to this one and got on narrow peg so I could find my bait across, but... Your, your hull looks lovely. Got a nice bit of bare bank, rushes either side. My hull looks lovely. Yeah, that, I'm going to rephrase that. The swim, your swim on the far bank. <laughs> so talk to me about what you've gone with. Have you gone with a method feeder or have you gone with a banjo? No, I've gone for a flat method. Um, because it's quite shallow, because it's warmed up, I'm expecting to be able to get a bite quick. And yeah, I think, quick, 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 you can get your pellets across. Oh, <laughs> wind's Got a window. Um, and I think we're a flat method. I'm using original ICS one. It opens up quicker. So if you are looking for a quick bite in shallow water, I think that they're a little bit more uh, responsive than a banjo. If I want to try and keep my bait a bit tighter, deeper water, slower bites, I'll probably use a banjo, but I've started on a method, and let's see. That, that's not to say that I won't pick one up because I've got a banjo on my side tray. So and you've gone with two spots across there, haven't you? Yeah, uh, one straight in front of me, and then one off to my left. There's a bit of a, a bay, and because it's shallow, chances are that you'll you look and the big fish, I think, in here. From what I'm told, you could hook one, spook them. They're going to move down your swim a little bit down your peg rather. So I've created another swim, which is what you just see me feeding badly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to say I fed that swim, but I fed just about every part of my peg with that feed. You fed Molden's late, didn't you? Made a bit of an ash of it. <laughs> um, hey, but nobody's perfect, not even not even me. And... Hey, most, most videos, they cop that out, you know. Well, look, you said it's a bit of a... Uh, sub you know sub uh, category to our warts and all so do it as you see it don't hold back tell us all your faults tell me about warts and all mick while you bring it up because some people you might not have seen the warts and all our well, series tell everyone about warts and all well the first thing is somebody has said to me i don't understand what warts and all means yeah and that's probably because our older viewers know exactly what it means because it's a bit of an old-fashioned saying yeah uh, basically, it means, uh, and here's a lovely word, it's the unvarnished truth. So, it's all the warts and everything else. Um, we're, not, we're not smothering it in makeup, we're not disguising it, we're not camouflaging it. Um, obviously, we have to edit it because nobody wants to see me sitting there for an hour without a bite. Uh, or any other other our lads. Um, so, we're trying to obviously keep it interesting for you, but we're leaving in what some people might call the negatives, where your swim has died or where things didn't go to plan and you've attacked, attacked a venue, like today for instance, if this was a warts and all, we'd, and we didn't catch anything, we'd go, well, we completely got that wrong, it was probably a day when you needed to do this or that or the other, because ultimately, everybody that we, um, you know, have tuning into our videos and our channel and all our other social media platforms, they're real people like we are and they go fishing and fishing's a very very interesting uh, pastime where sometimes it goes to plan sometimes it don't go to plan and the fish don't always oblige and it don't work out like you think it's going to do so it's almost a realistic unvarnished day out fishing we try and put as much content as we can in where we show you what the little tricks and um, 
little bits of information that we can and stuff that we've learnt over the years and keep it interesting as a fishing video. So yeah, that, that's what it's all about. That's what it? it's all about, isn't it? And yeah. yeah. So far, you've done two. Yeah, we've done... Uh, decoy and Barston. Yeah, we have, yeah. We've had Sam Collett, our latest signing. Yeah, brilliant. Super Sam. He's done... Um, where it is? Without the one that he's fished at Makings in the yeah. rain. which he absolutely chucked it down. It's horrendous conditions and the fishing was rock hard, but Sam worked really hard at it and he ended up catching a lovely bag of fish. He caught like a dozen really nice car on meat. Yeah. Uh, so that was good. And then we'd done one with Danny Wilson up at Partridge Lakes. That's and right. And again, the whole ethos behind it, as Mick said, is trying to show you that you don't just go in and catch fish. Like today, a perfect example, you might not have seen that. I'm chucking over them. It looks a bit flat to me. So I've come off the bank, a metre and a half, thinking that I'm trying to get in a bit of deeper water. Little decisions like that that go through your head as an angler that might catch you an extra few fish. And that's kind of with the warts and all what we were trying to get across really. And so far the comments, people have been, who've watched it have really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I think people have appreciated the honesty and simplicity of it, which is, like I said. Well, we want people to catch more fish, don't we? Yeah, of course we do. Um, we didn't learn everything we know on our own, did we? We've all had tutors, we've all had people who've influenced us, travelling partners, you know, people who fish went past. When we were younger people, who've, older people who've got more experience and taught you what you needed to know. Don't you hate that? Sorry to interject. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's... You know when your catty whacks you? Yeah. <laughs> that worse, isn't it? It's horrible. That's when you know you're trying hard, when you went back your fingers are all when you're finished. <laughs> Although, at a minute, I think all I'm doing is taking skin off my knuckles and achieving nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, Joe, you've just talked about last week's Commercial National. Well done. Thank you. You, uh, obviously, you and the team won, which is third third year on bounce, I think. Third year on bounce. And yeah, we're trying Jordan, to work Jordan out... Jordan Blacks. Yeah. Obviously, we're both members of the Blacks. Yeah. Um, and I love this time of year because it means it can get... This is going to sound really, really uh, soppy, this is. But I always, you know, on a Saturday morning when team matches come up and you get your shirt out and you put it on? Oh, yeah. I get like a little bit of pride and like, yeah. I put my bounds of black stuff on, I'm really like... I get that, 100%. You get that? Yeah, of course I and do. And I always think about the anglers who've gone before us and... Well, yeah, Dennis White, your John Allett and... That's and, right. Keith Hobson's, and do you know what I mean? There's a D lot of history there, isn't there? Yeah, Dick Cleggs, Tom Pickering's. And uh, what, what a lineup! Sam Collett would chatting to me the other day. So it's like the Man City of fishing. Like, you know, you've picked all the best anglers, and it got me thinking about that because Barnsley don't actually pick the best anglers. That when you think about the youngsters that are in the, that are the core of the squad now, I've been in Barnsley for 15 years. Yeah. Matt joined at the same time as me. Yeah. Geldart joined at the same time as me. Frankie and James were a couple of years after. Yeah, yeah. And they've sort of, Brownsie's grown them as anglers, not the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Does that and make that's sense? Kind of, it's kind of what's always happened. Yeah, um, and it's very easy to look at it and think, oh, they're just picking the best anglers up here and there, but it's not actually what happened. No, it's, it's not at all. Um, I mean, let's be fair, Frankie, Matt, Sheffield lad, Frankie, West Yorkshire, James is a Northern lad. They're um, yourself. I think I remember Ian Bowman. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm a little bit older than you, just a bit. And um, I remember Ian Bowman saying, There's two lads from up our way, Joe Carras, he used to call you, because that's what everybody calls you. <laughs> just for the record, I'll <laughs> say it once again <laughs> Joe, Joe Carras. He, um, in fact, I think actually he might now and again call you Carras. Um, no, you'd have got it wrong. And he's gone, there's this lad, fantastic, comes to Thirsk and Sese, catches loads of fish, we should have him in team. And of course that, and this is the truth, everybody, you know, good good match anglers, often travel around in pairs. And um, and, I'm, and I'm sure Ian were looking for a travelling partner. So yeah, I mean, just, Ian were going to the Oaks all the time. That's right. That's right, and so were you. But then when he was team fishing, he was having to travel a bit of a distance and he wanted somebody to travel with. And so 
massive compliment to you that he were like, well, A, I want to travel with him, and B, he's good enough to be in team, and, well, the rest is history, because when you had the medal swinging around your neck again, last weekend, fantastic victory, lots yeah. of work putting back, lads. I think I Lind uh, Lindon fished its head off. Lindon fished its head off. I've got to say, massive credit to Lindon, because, hey, look at these, duck I've got a shoulder of ducklings here. That you can't weigh them. Uh, massive credit to Lindon because the pressure of that match, 240 people, when you're actually there, you can't believe how many cars and bodies are on the bank. No, no, it's... Uh, um, what were the 300 and...? I mean, I think there's 500 pegs on that fishery, but 240 feels tight, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of uh, course it does, it's full, but there's not many places can host ah, a match like that, and that's one of them. I've done it again. So the back of your fingers. Oh, Mick. I keep getting odd plink and dink and... So, yeah, anyway, the, the Commercial National. So we won it for the third time in a row, which is amazing. And I, I think we've won it like eight times now in the 10 or 11 years it's been going. Yeah. Um, we put a lot of effort in. Like, everybody has to go up twice and practice twice yeah. in matches. Yeah. Um, which is great, because obviously you get a good feel for what's going on. Well, even though each other, aren't you? Even though you can't get that feel of what it's like with 240 blokes on it, you're still getting a feel for what the baits the fish are eating. And it's very obvious that all we really need are maggots and pellets. Yeah. Um, casters will come into it on certain places where you could probably fish shallow, but it was pretty obvious that pellets was a banker and then maggots was consistent. And my match was dead easy. I just, just caught on our pellets, Mick, all day. Because you caught carp, didn't you? Yeah, I was on strip with every peg in, and I caught nine proper carp for, and a couple of accidents, a couple of F1s, a couple of skimmers for 35 kilo, which is over 70 pound, isn't it? So real good fish. Good weight. Real good fish, and so that was it, second. Here's a point. Um, because you knew what weight you were going to be on before, was that on Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah. And then you draw for your peg on the morning? Yeah. So... You obviously know what strip is, you know what fish are in it, and with all the tactics that you'd learn on your visits yep. up there and what the other lads had learned, did your match turn out to be the same as what you'd the night before? You, well, well, I'll be going there, I'll be fishing for this, this and this, but whether Lee, that be F1s or Yeah, well, Lee, or, Lee had actually drawn on that exact peg the Sunday before. All oh, right, sorry, I didn't realise Tell you that. what, these F1s are in right going edge here. Um, but obviously when he drew it, there was a lot of space and it was a colder day. He's always, he's always got loads of space. Yeah, of course he, he has, yeah. yeah. Um, so that, but one thing he said to me, he went, silvers will play a big part, but there were a lot of carp feeding early. Proper carp, big carp. Um, you need to be on it from the minute, minute go. So I... Um, I had £20 in my first two chucks, two proper carp, which obviously is a great start. Um, Lee had said that you'll probably catch one or two, and I, I ended up with three off my short line for probably £30, which is just a great start, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it sets you off on the right track. Yeah, of course. Yeah, relaxes you. Um, gives you a bit of breathing space, doesn't it? Yeah. And then when that, when that died, I actually thought I need to... I do need to fish for silvers. So I, I, I went down that route, put some maggots in, some casters in, some worms in. But it was quickly obvious to me that because there were some carp in my peg, even though they weren't feeding, they were upsetting everything. Right, yeah. Um, and I was like being a bit of a busy fool trying to catch these silvers in a peg where the carp were just upsetting them. So I just, I think I said to you the other day, I actually literally sat, I actually took five minutes out of my match, had a cup of tea, um, and just sat and took stock for a minute, which I think is quite... People probably think, well, you're in the middle of a national, you need to be 100% focused, and I was, but I felt like I just needed to leave my swim alone for five minutes. Take a step back from it and let it settle. Don't put any bait in, let them eat what's there, clear the peg out, and then start again, and I started again, I put a 16 metre section on, and I'm like, right, I'm going to be pellet fishing now, and I just went out 16 metres, fish pellets, and I've caught like another five carp, that's all. Not a lot, but then five carp probably went, you know, 40 pounds. Yeah. 
And, I, and the lads either, either side of me started fishing maggots and stuff, and they were catching silvers and that, but every time my float go under, it'd be a proper fish, and it turned Brilliant. out to be the right decision, which is great. So that practising, because that's an interesting thing about team fishing, it's not what you've learnt just personally, but it's what one of your teammates has learnt, pass that knowledge on, yeah. and put you right and said, this is the most efficient way to fish that peg. Because if you're not... Um, add that and you rocked up to strip because you know you're going to strip you might have thought that you were going to try and catch there's a lot of chub in there there's a lot yep. of ones in there a lot of silvers in there and, and obviously carp as well clearly but you might not have had the same focused direct approach i um i think this is it's a really important part of that is because everyone in the team's at such a level that when they come back with a bit of info you can trust it yeah because you you're never thinking, well, if I'd have probably done it a bit different there, because it could be Matt Godfrey, it could be Alan Scott on, it could be James Dent telling you this, who are just unbelievable anglers. So Yeah, they're not bad at fishing, are they? Exactly. So you, if they found a little gem out and they think it's worth telling you, you've got to consider it, haven't you? Uh, yeah. And Lee's whole thing, it never worked out for me on the day, but Lee had, Lee had sussed out that feeding like 60 centimetres short of the pole tip was really good for the silvers. Okay. So all my bait on that day was fed well short of the pole tip because Leeds worked it out for me. <laughs> Little information like that is, is, is massive, isn't it? No, it's massive. Yeah. So yeah, so that was it. Three on a trot. Brilliant. Brilliant. So what we'll do, we'll do a bit of fishing and then we'll have a little chat about your matches because you've had some really good times lately, haven't you? It's been a little, little purple patch and... Uh, couple of important things to talk about so yeah yes. let's see if we so, can catch one first and then get into groove good job you are here mate well one of us has got to pull his finger out joe we were just saying weren't we that there's not a lot of fish moving around there's hardly anything moving no no it? other than you know you're... i mean look it's just from for from what i'm told that's a very small specimen for morland have a look at him like he's one. immaculate, he is. Let me just... Look at him. Beauty. Gorgeous fish. We've had another F1, a bit bigger than that, and then jet black. But I just dropped that a bit shorter, Joe, actually. And I got it's very still and hot, isn't it? Yeah, it's bright. I mean, it's... The wind's a bit cool. It's that in between -y. It's a bit in between isn't it? They're not uh, climbing up bank. But of course, as we were saying, they're thinking about spawning and all of a sudden, when fish spawn, you can't catch any, can you? Well, this is either going to be one of them sessions where it gets it, to two o'clock and rod keeps going round, or it's just going to... Well, there's a chance of that, but it don't, it don't feel like there's any fish moving, but in a lake that's got this many fish in it, surely... We'll get an arrival. If they were swimming about on top of your tail, wouldn't you? So are they just sulking mid-water? What are they up to? Because we're getting some liners, aren't we? Yeah, there's odd fish. Just drop that a bit shorter, look, and... Do you reckon it's there? Three foot? Yeah, it's got to be. Because when you're tight, it's just donk, and then there, we're just a little bit of a... I think that's what I'm going to go do. There's some nice reed beds in my peg. I'm gonna, there's one to the right that I've not even gone near yet, so I'm going to go and clip up to that. Yeah. And have a Because it'll be there. a bit deeper off front Yeah, maybe. Then. Yeah, you're not up against mud. And we'll try that. And that took bit. it, that took us, that last one took it as soon as it hit bottom. So we'll see. So, Mick. Joe. The nice people that's on your baits have sent us a, a parcel. They have certainly have. Look? Why not? What they got us? Ah, there's a bag. I think I've already had a bag of it. Have you? Just behind me there, look. Oh. Is that salted caramel? That's that's the half that I've left you, because I'm not greedy. It was a good half, don't get me wrong. I'll tell you what. Just can't help it. That's nice, isn't it? Well, I was thinking about eating it. So we've got the new I'm not really catching up, so I might as well eat that. I'm on your baits, what do you reckon? Well, that's my rig, so listen. that's not it. Pre-threaded silicon, great product. We've both been um, working oh. with Sono for a long time, haven't we? so we know how good the product is. But we this did. is our latest offering. Salty caramel. Yeah. For anyone and interested. first job I did, as you know, and I'll just tasted it. <clears throat> it's really salty, isn't it? Got any 
cup, you got a cup of tea? Uh, yeah, really salty, which this time of year, I think when fish are thinking about spawning, they come out of the winter. Salt's a good thing, isn't it? It's a great thing. Uh, and I think salt's a good thing full stop. Well, it's, when I do my chub fishing in the winter, yeah. I use loads of it on the bait. And yet, in match fishing, I don't even consider it, which is silly, really, isn't it? Because I, I know for a fact the chub love it. Fish love it. You know, big carp anglers, specimen carp anglers, I actually, like them, yeah, they actually put it in raw, don't they? Mm. And uh, and fish, and that's got loads of it, and it smells gorgeous. It smells gorgeous. And you could eat it yourself. I knocked a bit up and put it in margins because it's quite an heavy mix, quite a coarse mix. And I think I've, that'd be good for skimmers, do you? I've put it down there. I think it'd be a great natural venue because yeah. it's nice and heavy. But there's a, enough sweetness in there. Mm. It's fish meal, but it's also sweet. So, so that's like a beauty, that. yeah. And I've also heard about this, even though I've not. Do we uh, yeah. have a little sniff? Why not? So this is super feeder. So I'm keeping them out. My tipping gets a bit dragged in. Sweet fish meal. Have a little, get your smelling tackle around that. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, you've got, anything that's fish meal, in my, my opinion, I've got to be able to smell that fish meal. So, you, when, so you're, even though it's a sweet fish meal, you want to get that? Yeah, because if, I'm a, of, I'm a bit of a black and white kind of person. What's the point of putting a fish meal in, ground baiting, if it's not actually fish meal? Yeah. So, I don't want to talk this wishy-washy. It's either one or the other. Yep. And we like sweet ground baits when we're fishing on natural venues for roach and things like that on river and stuff, but that. What do you reckon? I think we'll knock a bit of that up in a minute. Why not? It's a nice colour. No bit of salt in that, I know. That has got salt in it. Yeah. I can taste it. Probably shouldn't be eating too much of that because well, it's got fish meal in it, but. Yeah, it has. Nice, fine mix. That could be quite good. Part at super feeder range. So natural, speaking of so natural ground baits. See that catch then? I'm impressed. Deep water. I've not been involved in this one. This is a... Let's have a sniff. You can't. Heavy, heavy can't mix. Look at ground bait without a sniff, can you? No, an heavy mix. Oh, that's different again. So... Coriander it. The big roach that they do, oh, wow, it's fantastic. That is coriander. I'm saying there's going to be some salt in there. I just think I'm going to be obsessed by tasting ground bait. You've got to taste it. It's part of it. I've always tasted my ground bait. Oh, wow. Salty? Yeah, but sweet as well. Salt and sweet. Yeah. Now, the whole idea of this is to create a ground bait where if you're going on a river, you're going on a deeper canal, big lake, big loch, you've got something that's got some binding power. I think they've been testing that on Gloucester, haven't they, which mm. is a proper heavy duty I reckon that industrial one. canal. Tastes good. Got one. Well, Joe, I thought that were on, Cap. So that's deep water. So we've got deep water, super feeder, sweet fish meal, and salted caramel, which are the, the um, ground baits. And then obviously there's just some six mil pellets that are cooked in the box. We've got sticky method pellets, which are very, very user friendly. What flavour are there? We've got power scope X. Yeah. And we've got salted caramel. So whichever one you fancy. And they are, let's foolproof. Make, make life easy. Come yeah. on with water. It's, instructions Leave on your bag. They're yeah. going to be sticky to go on your metal feeder, so we like them. We've got salted caramel cookable pellets, which I might put one of these on the method. When we start getting some bites, that could be a yeah. nice update. Getting bites a bit hard, but we probably might get one with them. Are they soft ones, are they? Soft hookable expanders that are durable, go on a metal feeder, chuck them out on a waggler, fish them on a pole. Yeah. So if you're not into preparing your own, because we're a bit yeah, just leave that we're in. a bit fussy, aren't we? But, yeah, but if you want to just leave them in your bag, yeah, ideal. We've got the salty caramel liquid flavour as well, which let's have a look. This is going to smell even better than the ground meat, I reckon. Yeah. That's the how do you heavy oil? No, no, it's just that's liquid flavour. That is. Oh, sorry. Well, nowadays they can't put they can't be coloured, can they? So the no, because of all the yeah. The rules. That smells gorgeous. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what. So if you've got another ground bit of pellets that you want to give a little bit, of turn it. them into salted caramel. You know what I like that to on. Do with this yeah. Is a top tip from me. The Sonia Bates bandoms are awesome, but they're very tough, aren't they? They're rock yeah, out. they're firm. Yeah. Because yeah, if you they want they to are. put a band on them, you need them to be a bit firmer. But if you like me and you like to spike them, drizzle of this a couple of days before you go fishing. Just a drizzle. Shake and leave them. Do it twice, and then the 
softened up and uh, boosted with the set with the scent. So you've got best way for it there. Stick us a bit in there. You're gonna do it, aren't you? Why not? So that's all you need. What the far? Give him a shake. Do it a couple of times, you know, a day or so before you go for the And they'll be nice and soft to get your spike in. We've got the salted caramel one to one paste as well. Everything's salted caramel and then we've got hemp and corn. Now I reckon I've, I've fed some of that down margins today. I reckon that. I got the other two. Down the edge is gonna be spot on. So there you go. Brilliant. Another brilliant spring launch. I think that, that is a nice little gathering of, of uh, bait from Sonu. They're uh, it's a brilliant range of bait, full stop doing it and obviously what they always try and do is add worthwhile additions. Yeah, in the right so it's obviously like your sticking method, it's not just every single product, it's like they're a great product. Yep. But people want that choice of flavour and colours, don't they? So, so there you go. It's awesome. So we just had a little look at that and then informal look I'm gonna say. Well done, well done so. You like that? Yeah, perfect. So I'm gonna mix this up. Why not? So look at it. Oh, oh my knees, Nick, my knees, my knees. Hold up. So Mick. Now then. Commercial National, that was that was great. But the big news is Feeder Masters. Ah. You've only gone and done it, haven't you, already? We're in. Early qualification. That's the headline. Early qualification? That's the headline, yeah. Um, completely messed me early summer calendar up. <laughs> um, sat twiddling my thumbs. However, it's given me a few brownie points and time to think about the rest of the summer and up and coming big events. But yeah, so Feeder Masters obviously is a massive um, part of my calendar. Uh, in more ways than one. So it really kicks off with the Sonu Super League, uh, Feeder Master Super League, which was back at the right at the beginning of um, of April, and we had that qualification uh, event up at Allcroft Fisheries. That's where the team teams, event, isn't it? That, so that's the team event, yeah, and that um, that's a qualifier for teams who were relegated from last year's league. They get a chance to go back into the playoff, if you like. And then new teams can uh, apply and they're drawn out of an hat. And they all fish together there. And then the top teams go through to join the league for the summer, which actually starts a week on Saturday um, at Southfield. But I'll come back to that in a minute. And then the start of April always is the um, signals the start of Feeder Masters. Press Innovations, Feeder Masters, individual event that runs... I think April the 9th was the first qualifier this year at Decoy. Uh, then we've had one at Barston, and then we've had uh, one at Ferry Meadows. Um, and obviously I've, I've fished those three. The first one was Decoy. I think we went prior to that to have a look at Decoy. Um, did a nice warts and all video there, which is what yeah. we've just been talking about. And that gave us a look at what the venue was doing and we caught a lot of fish in practice and it fished its absolute brains out um, the fish, and as we were talking earlier when we were talking about this this venue today and the weather that was that little warm period um, but it's gone cold since then cat fed everywhere, they'd come out of the winter slumber and they were chewing um, I didn't draw particularly well I were on elm and it were quite tight in that bottom end I think I were pegged 18 I think I were or 16 and no 18 that's one of the strips so it's one of the strips yeah. strip lakes a little bit like the one that we filmed on which was orc yeah that's a, a brilliant one and of course it were oh there's a few smaller carp and it'll be all right and it'll be a lower weight you were looking i think you know me and lee discussed it and we thought my target weight would be 80 to 90 pound well i had 98 14 and come nowhere um our particular lake because the Which zone is of brilliant twin. fishing, isn't it? Oh, it's un unbelievable, um, and it's always it always gives decoy, never lets us down. It's a brilliant qualifier. It kicks off the campaign, um, and it's a great way to you know sort of what I call turns your season from winter to to spring, and it's the signals the start of the summer. And uh, I'd night eight pound. I think there were hundred and six in corner. Um, then there was 130 some, then 108. Um, Lad at side of me didn't really do so well, uh, didn't weigh. I had 98, then a no weigher. Um, 
I think I pinched their two fish, to be honest with you. And then they were in hundred and some. And then not so good at the other end, because wind were wrong for them, and that were our lake. So, and then behind me, they were 172 pounds, which would be cedar, and that were uh, Shemek Solsky, or Presmek to his English friends. Excellent, excellent pronunciation there. Yeah, well, well, he's corrected me once or twice. Um, Shemek's no strange, he's qualified for feeder master before, and I know he's doing it at Larford and absolutely took the mick there. Oh, Jemex, he's an amazing angler, isn't he? When it's Bri carp, he's fantastic. Brilliant method feeder fisherman, understands carp. He's got portions and smells and liquids and flavours and, and he's the most active angler you've ever seen. Um, in fact, I kept turning around because I wonder what was going off behind me and it was basically just him empty in lake. £172 <laughs> pound later, match win. Am I right in thinking he won the qualifier the year before as well? He did. On yeah. that venue? And he's qualified at Larford, and he's qualified there as well. Just a brilliant. Mick, I've just been absolutely towed in, and there was nothing on. Ah, I think I think Joe, the fish are shallow, but not against the bank. I think they're cruising, which might be because this they're thinking about spawning. Can always be a problem. So that that was that one. Um, so that's decoy done. That was decoy. It was great. Then we had Barston, and funny enough. In fact, I'm kind of giving it away here, aren't I, a bit? We went and had a look there, and we went filming with Sam Collett. And, and of course, I had to come and supervise. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so I went and had a little fish. Beautiful, overcast day, really windy, um, which put Sam to the test. He did a great job catching fish that day. And I went off and did a bit of feeder fishing up, up the bank a little bit. And basically caught a fish every chuck in. <laughs> Big skimmers, bream. Chucked a method across, uh, close to that island. If you, if you landed it short, you caught a bream. If you got it touching grass, you caught a carp. In fact, it was ridiculous. It was. It, so, that last few hours of fishing we had was ridiculous. Oh, funny. one to chuck. Um, because the fish had warmed up and all that, great. Anyway, I think four days later, we get to Barston. It had been warm, warm nights, everything. Flat calm, bright sunshine. Yeah. Anyway, I think the lesson of that day is don't get carried away when you pleasure fishing, because pleasure fishing and matches are ultimately Very chalk and cheese. Things, aren't they? Yeah, I had 20 odd pounds, which were, I'm going to say, 10 accidents. What I mean by that is I've had, oh no, sorry, I did catch an F1 uh, while I was trying to catch a carp. Couldn't get a bat on, off a skimmer, because it was flat, I think. Um, cut a long story short. There were a few carp down in, in the worst pegs, ordinarily on paper, 80s and 90s. There were a few carp there. Lee Kerry trounced the match. A uh, few carp round him, but he just seemed to dominate that area. He qualified and he won that one. Uh, brilliant. Along with obviously the two other qualifiers. Which meant I've sort of come away a bit disappointed. I've one great day's fishing, one poor day's fishing. No qualification. So then you moved on to Ferry Meadows, Mick? Yeah, um, cracking venue. Proper, if you like, traditional style fishing. Big natural water. It's basically uh, the River Neen flood water, if you like, if you've never been. Do you know, I, I get told off about this every time, you know. What's that? Because I live in Northampton. Ah. It's the Nen. It's the Nen in Northampton. Yeah, well, I'm from Rotherham, it's called Neen. Well, I'm from there, so it's called Neen. Yeah. Let us know in the comments below, is it Nen or Neen? Because I That's get told right. off by my missus every single time. Yeah, yeah. And, and people from Barnsley don't say it's from Barnsley. Uh, but that's their prerogative. Yeah. Anyway, Neen runs in and out of it. It's as wild as it comes. It can be windy. It's big, it's open. Let's call it, it's a bit of a man's water. Um, yeah, long walk. Everything's yeah, big, manly about, isn't it? Plenty of walking, you've got to get your chest waders on, get your platform out, uh, you've got to get your big boy rods out, and um, take plenty of bait, ground bait worms. And it, I really like it, you can get your teeth into it, it's quite industrial. It's a great venue, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's always served me well, I've qualified from there before, and I've also had two second in zone, so, you know, I have a couple of near misses. Anyway, I've got it back, um, brilliant organisation, PDAA, um, 
the yeah, lads that's that, a good club, isn't it? Oh no, they, that's what you Shout call out to PDAA. A, a fishing club. They're in. They love the fishing. They love the waters. They do a brilliant job. Uh, and there's always plenty of lads on hand to help out for feeder masters, which is a great help. You can't you can't run an event like feeder masters without these organisers because we can't be at every single qualifier. And um, I've got it in bag. I've drawn Overton one one six hundred and sixteen peg, which. I'd never seen before. In fact, I've never been on that bank. I've only ever been on the Roman bank uh, in the 20s or the teens. And I, straight away, I got excited because it was the MPEG. Now, quickly, people are, uh, I know it's MPEG, but they've not been catching them there. They've been catching them uh, from 100 peg, uh, 101, 102 round. Um, so there's 110, 111, I think. There'd been a ridiculous weight of a hundred and... 190 pound, wasn't it? I, I think it were 190, yeah. I was going to say 180 some, but I think it were 190. The week before, from 110, I'm going to say. So that's the middle of that far bank. Anyway, Alpha Trots on my trolley. Um, Travelling partner um, was Oliver Scott on and Brett Clark. Brett weren't far away, I think he were on 109, so he half answered it. And Oliver had drawn 88, sorry, 99, which I thought were a bit long there. Anyway, it gets there. I've got a face wind, proper in your chops. So I bit all my sliding rigs off, put helicopter rigs on, picked a line, plumbed it up. Tell the punters why you did that. Why, why didn't you just stick with your sliding rig? Well, I love sliding rigs for natural fishing, bream fishing and roach fishing and stuff like that. So basically free running rig which i think we've showed people how we tie them in past but i'm i knew i was going to be fishing 50 60 meters usually that's about the right distance at ferry and um it was smacking me chops and what happens is it's a long tail venue so ordinarily you're fishing tails up to a meter you, you know 70 centimeters a meter sometimes you can catch them shorter but i'll come back to that and um what happens is when you're casting and you punch it a quite a big feeder, you, you get basically get taffles. So your up length wants to, as, as your feed is uh, obviously travelling, it wants to wrap around your main line. Yeah. And and what happens is, yeah, you get it there and it's all great, but you're not fishing. And what I mean by that is that your up length is not free to be picked up by a fish and for them to sort of take the bait into the mouth and get proper hook ups. So and now and again, you actually get a pluck, and that's usually because your hook length's not fishing, your rig's not fishing. And when you're chucking a bit of a distance and you're trying to catch, and I thought I'm, five bream might do me if it were a tough day, because I've been on there before when 40 odd pound, I've been second with 40 odd pound, and 40 odd pounds won it. So it's like, you don't know, it might not be fishing too well, and you don't really want to make any mistakes, and every cast counts. And um, so I'm, I've looked at it, so the alternative, when you want an anti-tangle uh, feeder rig and it's allowed, is an helicopter rig. And we'll show you that at some stage, probably on another video, but it basically means that your feed is attached to your line and then you put your up length on a swivel that's stopped on your line, just a bit further up. And when you're casting, that allows your up length to spin around your main line and it doesn't get tangled. So you're always fishing and you've got a nice clean rig and you get proper pickups and, and proper fish. So I, I did that, sat there, and I, I picked a line, I think it was 57, 57 metres, checked it for weed, lovely. It's like, what, what can go wrong? Nothing can go wrong. Um, so we baited up, and he always do... You like, put a lot like of baiting? Pre-baiting. Pre well, what I did, I took a, a three-pint tub, and I put... Um, I put three-quarters of a pint of casters, I put half a pint of dead maggots, and half a pint of micros, uh, into a tub, wasn't them round, made a bit of a Bombay mix and bait up feeder, proper bait up rod, braid direct with 50 gram uh, bait up feeder on so I know I can punch it into wind and I just basically kept filling that feeder until that bait tub were empty and to give myself a good bit of bait because the fish there are dead aggressive and you're when they come for in, big bream there, aren't you? Oh, they, they go to they go double figures. Um, but my experience is when you've got a net of fish, you get some small ones, some big ones, and the average the average is six pound. 
So yeah, they're big, because some of them are eight and some of them are four. And um, nice big bed of bait, so make sure they come, when they come, you can hold them. It's about being able to hold the shoal, because it's quite clear and they're quite easily spooked. And if you can get them down, that's great. The only downside to that is if it is a tough day, you've got a lot of bait there, and if they're just pecking, you've kind of got too much bait. But, but I don't believe you can uh, judge if it's going to be that day. So you've, you've got to go with the, if you like, the banker option, which is plenty of bait and hope, hope for a, settle, a settling show. Got one after an hour, lovely bite, got towed in on maggot. Um, then it took me another 40 minutes to catch another, and I thought it's a bit random. Maybe they are just cruising around, you've got to pick them off. So I had a nice long tail, three floating maggots, did all, all the tricks. But it just didn't really happen. Um, and then the wind dropped. And I thought, oh, this is going to get worse. Um, and, and I got a little run. I got two small ones and another big one, and I lost one, which nearly pulled my rod off rest. I think it went over its back as it landed. <laughs> and um, so going into the last hour and a half, I'd probably, no, just over an hour, I'd got six. And then I thought, I'm just going to have a chuck with a method. I had a method rod set up because I thought, if they are in area and they're just pecking, and they're going down, they've got quite a lot of bait there, and maybe I'm, they're not picking my bait up because there's a lot of bait there, so I thought if I put a method there, there's a chance that that could become a target bait, and I stuck a, a bandom on it, um, anyway, I chucks it in, pick this rod up, chucks it in, puts it in rest, it hasn't been in 10 seconds, and it goes, Whoop, like a four inch pull, and I thought, oh, that's picked it up. Anyway, I'm patient, patient, no. Then my rod's just gone, oh, towed in. I thought, oh, it had picked it up, it's towed it in. And it won't take a liner. Because as I've gone to pick it up and stop my rod getting dragged in, I see the tip coming back and I thought, oh, that were a liner. So as I'm winding in, I thought, they've arrived. It's not because I've put a method out there. There's, there's some there. So I've actually chucked it back down. So I've had a 30 second chuck with this rod. I picked me, um, my fix, you know, my sort of helicopter, fixed part and rig up, my helicopter rig. Bum, 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 puts um, three maggots on, chucks it in, tip straight round, gets one. Well, my peg filled up with fish, and could I catch one? Could what, I? Oh, so you're getting liner to death? They've arrived, they're on my bait, and my tip's dancing like a good one. So I'm like, right, what do they want? I think it's got too much bait there, do they want that? And earlier on, I, the, the bit I should have said is that I put a, a bit of worm in, and um, to try and get a reaction and it did get a reaction and I got a few liners in that middle swell and I caught them four and I lost that one and I, I felt like that had drove them crackers yeah um, they were into it but they didn't know what to pick up and did they really want worms and maggot had been as good as worm and I were a bit I were a bit confused actually as to what they actually wanted it wasn't straightforward so I, I cut the worm out and concentrated and didn't put much bait in and basically fished mainly ground bait to catch what were there rather than just add to the to the confusion and the misery of what were happening i've just had a lovely drop back job so you cut all your particles out i cut my particles out because i wanted to concentrate hey you got one i have it it were a, a drop back and a, a bit of a lame excuse for a a pull it's a, it's a small fish Tell you what it is, Joe. It's a, it's a bream. It's a what? It's a bream. I know. I said that quietly because I was embarrassed. A bream. I'm fishing for carp and I've caught a bream. Nobody mentioned them in the. It, uh, heard, it heard about this Bombay mix. Yeah, it, 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 it wanted it, to get in. Yeah, involved, I've, talk, I've it? talked it on, haven't I? Um, yeah. So I cut my particles out because I thought, well, there's fish there. Don't need any more bait. I actually need to catch them because I've not got long left. And um, look at him. He don't like he's been caught very often. And um, I caught one. And then I, I fouled up one and I'm like, oh, there's too much bait. So I tried fishing on the edges of my swim. That didn't work. The fish were clearly right in the bait. And then I thought, I just need to short my tail down. And I bit me up length in half. So I was fishing about 40 centimetres and um, chucked in, gets one, and I thought, that's it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, my tip stopped that bouncing. And so I'd caught one, I think I spoke to him. 
and I thought, oh, I'm done. I'm hearing that Danny Wilson had got five, Brett had got four, there were a kid who caught two great biggins on the other bank, and I thought, it doesn't take much on here, somebody gets a late arrival, so I'd got a bit of an urgency about job. And um, Is this when the crowd had gathered or not? Uh, yeah, there were a few people knocking <laughs> about, and Rob, uh, Rob the bailiff were there. And we're closing minutes at match, and all of a sudden, he gets another line. I thought, oh, the back, fantastic. And it chucks in, and the back and tips going, sat on my hands. Anyway, I gets one, drops it in there, says to Rob, how long's left? He said, 10 minutes. I filled my feed, I thought, yeah, I have a chance, chance of one, might even get more. Anyway, I got three. So in the last 11 minutes, I got four fish, good uns, and then it would just get away in. Good song story short, 63 pound, I think I weighed, and um, unbelievably, 16 pound was second knot lake, so obviously I were on the epicentre, but I felt like I'd I caught them and I managed my swim quite well. So I won the zone, which I knew were going to be qualification, but and a little bonus on top of that, I'd actually won match. Jordan Scott was second, and uh, Matt Bretherton also qualified. So Jordan won his zone, sorry. Uh, Jordan Scott, so that's his second time into the final. And um, Matt Bretherton had done quite well with 20, so that's 19 it. or 20 pound. So that's it back to Tamar? In top top zone, and uh, off off we're off to Tamar. See you there. Um, thanks to my lucky mascot, Oliver Scott on who I travelled with Oliver last year to Gloucester and won't match. So if anybody wants to get a match win under the belt, just travel <laughs> get with, Oliver. with Oliver. Yeah, um, don't matter if you drive or he drives, as long as he didn't van. Is that why his dad's five times world champion? Well, Oliver's beginning to wonder because. His dad had qualified at uh, Barston. Uh, that were one of the other qualifiers, Alan. Um, so I think two matches on trot, his travelling partner qualified for the final. So tough to bits, Joe, really. Um, obviously, Feeder Masters close to my heart. With, uh, we started Feeder Masters back in 2016. And it's going to be the Premier Feeder competition. Sorry, Joe. Are we calling it the Premier Feeder Competition? It's uh, the number one feeder competition, that's what it is. The number one. It's the biggest and the best. And um, it seems to just become more and more popular every year. We have a great 20 matches, 20 great qualifiers. JCB was last week. Fished that, its, that fished well, didn't it? Fished, fished its brains out. Uh, I spoke to Glenn Lawrence yesterday, he had 100 pound, I think he was third in his zone, uh, on North Lake. Uh, it was superb. But there's another one this weekend at St Albans, and then there's one next Sunday at Southfield Res, which is where I've been concentrating my efforts um, since since qualifying. So I've been last two Wednesdays. Last Wednesday, sorry, last. What well, have I been? Three Wednesdays. First one, um, it fished quite tough. I had three fish, five pulls, seven pound. I just missed out of my section because somebody had two fish. For eight and I had three for seven. Typical South Philly, we're fishing, fishing hard. Will Freeman had come up for a practice ready for so, uh, Sonu Super League. He's in your team, obviously. Yeah, he stayed at our house. He's in my team and the plonker went and drew next peg. Um, but at least we could compare notes. I think he had three fish, I had three fish. Last week, we're first of the new fish feeder king. I mean, obviously we've said that feeder masters is number one. I should have said it's joint number one, isn't it? Because how could we decry the feeder king? But that's like the northern, the northern feeder masters. It's only fished on Southfield. Mick and Andy have got a fantastic uh, gang there. Bunch of lads, regular open match anglers, and they have a, a great competition. So there were 60 anglers on that last Wednesday. Put me hand in bag. I'd been on 116 at Ferry Meadows, I drew 16 at... Um, That's not a good one though, 16, is it? At, at, at Southfield, well, there's a comparison, you have to go over a bridge at Overton to get to that flyer, and this peg is before the bridge. And all I'm going to say is I felt like a troll, because I <laughs> sat down under that bridge, we had grumpy face all day, cut long story short, I blanked. You blanked? Never had a pull. 
I fished 70 metres to try and reach where I thought the area where the fish would be. Um, still didn't get a bite. Um, Charlie Simpson had a couple of fish to my right and there were a few fish caught down up south, uh, east bank there. Dave Clarkson won our zone with 10 or 11 pound, I think. And then, um, so it's try again next Wednesday. But I went yesterday, because we've got the Sono Super League there a week a week on Saturday. Went yesterday and there were 46 on open on a Wednesday, Joe. Yeah, that, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really popular venue because anybody can win. And that's the fact of, of Southfield. Well, that's um, why it's so popular. Well, because the type of fishing that it is. I've caught a Bob Nudd. Oh, so you have. Try, put a bit more depth on. <laughs> um, yeah, anybody can win because the bream, it's a shallow venue, bream roam up and down, settle where they want, feed when they want, and once upon a time, you, I think you could, some, you know, you used to be able to master it. Lee Kerry had a great run there, I used to catch loads of fish there. Everybody's had the turn at being the Southfield sort of master, but everybody's got the crack now, they can all cast, they can all cast the distance that you need to be, they all have got the right ground bait. Everybody knows that some days you have to pile in worms and some days you don't. So it's hard to get an edge. And um, that's the attraction of Southfield. And yes, there's always better pegs than others, but you don't know that before the match. Yeah. You only know it after, which makes it an ideal match venue because it's attractive to everybody. Um, yes, it was a great day. I've drawn peg 56. I've had about, I think I had 17 fish, including three proper ones, weighed 25 pounds, and managed to win match, so happy days. So you had loads of bites yesterday, which is totally the opposite of what yeah. people assume Southfield is like, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, so it's been Big Bream, Odden's, three here, four there, five there, Bream style fishing, all of a sudden it turned into, you've got to catch a few smaller ones, you know, work, at, work a bit harder, it's not just sit on your hands and wait, you have to, had to duck and dive a bit. Um, Lee Kerry were up there, he had 15 pound. Obviously he's part of our Feeder Masters uh, quartet. Me, Will and Buck Walder and Lee Kerry. And then Westy, uh, Graham West, he always uh, steps in and pulls it out of if one of us can't make it. So we've got a great team and, and Lee did well. So that's kind of been the start of the spring season. So happy days, let's hope it continues like that, really. I've got a funny feeling, Joe, this is another bream. Another bream? I think so. I don't think carp are feeding today, mate. Hold on, it might well, be one of them that turns into something else. Well, I've gone shallow. Just while I'm explaining that, I'm just trying to work. I tell you what, Joe, it could it could have turned into not a bream. Oh, that's good. Could be an F1. You know what they're like. Is it an F1? Well, it's um, it's either that or a baby carp. I'm going to stop guessing and wait till I've caught it. I tell you what it is. It's black as coil. F1. Black as coil. Black as coil. For all the people who've never been to Barnsley, that means it's very dark in colour, <laughs> like a piece of coal. <laughs> like, like a piece of coal. <laughs> that was me uh, telephone voice then. There he is, look. Look at him. Oh, I look at him. What a bonny fish that is, isn't it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Was that over where you put that bait in, or? That's where I've been pinging. A little bit off, tiny bit off. Tiny bit off. Right, so we've had a bit of a slow, funny old day actually. We've fished feeder, method feeder. Had a little play of a waggler, but that's been useless. I've had like two nice carp. Three nice carp, a bream, a couple of F1s on a feeder. But I've been flicking these 
manky casters on a long pole all day. And I've just caught an F1 shallow off camera. A real nice one as well, five pounder. So maybe there's a, we might catch a few fish now. And I thought it'd be good just to, oh, the wind's bad though. Just talk you through what I'm doing because these fish are really big in here. They're almost a bit more like carpy than they are F1s. So we've got, it's a bit more cute to catch them really. We've got a few different rigs up. We'll see if we can't catch one for you on camera. We just lose feeding casters. It's a bit awkward because the wind's dead swirly. I'm not using a jigger, I'm just using a little 4 by 10 float, the little tinks. About three foot deep. And I'm just turning the float over. I'm not going mad with the slapping, just turning it over and turning it over and feeding and working at my peg. And every now and again, I get a little flurry. I hoped like three and three chucks off cat. Oh, that was a bite and a swirl. There was a swirl off my bait then. That's what I mean. Maybe they're not quite ready yet for a mass extraction, but they're, they're coming. It's normally a good sign when you go in and you don't get mired with roach and stuff. I've got a couple of jiggers up as well. I might try that in a minute. I'm not. I'm not The, the water moves then when I miss that bite, so there's a chance there's a few here now. Whoa, horrible wind. There we go. Thought there were one there. Missed a couple of bites, and that. I noticed that at Lindo in the last few weeks, like you get when them big F1s are there, you. You get a few knocks and a few indications, and then all of a sudden you get one. There must be like a little shoal coming in your peg. It's not a, not a great big one, this though, but nice fish all the same. Might be a bream. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, skimmer. Nice fish though. See what we do. We'll just take a bit of depth off because I missed a couple of bites that time. Rather than just continuing on with the same, I'm going to take a bit of depth off, practice what we preach. Not a lot though, just a couple of inches. Let's see, it's obviously the beauty of casting. You do catch an odd fish like a skimmer, and a hard day like today has been. Quite welcome. Just obviously took them a few inches of depth off, so it'd be interesting to see if we catch one. Look at that bite straight away. Yep, there we go. So just taking that three inches off made all the difference then. It was amazing that you can take that much depth off and catch one straight away. It's got the orange zip on. Could be another skimmer. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Great bream. I don't like catching them when they're that big. Look at that thing. Proper. Look at that, Mick. Oh, yeah. Unreal. Lovely fish, that. It's noticeable, they've been They've been having a go with spawning they have today, and I reckon the, all the splashing stops, I reckon they might be a bit hungry. Obviously not really what we're after, after them lovely F1s, but I'll take a two and a half pound bream every day. Let's just whiz out mix. Actually an odd fish, it's been really hard today. I think we've caught it really badly, with them fish spawning today, but there you go. Just having a good day. There we go. 
like that. I managed to actually feed it quite nicely for a little spell when the wind dropped. Can we catch one? Try and feed. There we go. That is an F1 on a small carp and not a breed. I've been using the uh, 8 to 10 zip for me shallow lately. It's been really nice. Look at that. Lovely big F1s. Good size there. They're just so big. <laughs> Massive weight of these when they rock up shallow. Look at the size of him. Five pound, easy. Great fish, great fishing. And that's it, cast a shallow for them. There's been a nice little way today. Look at that, beauty. Slipping back, we'll see catch up with Mick and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. So boys and girls, that's about it, isn't it Mick? Yeah, I think, um, cause- You've had a jump on my kit, haven't you? I've had to have a get on your kit, cause We've had a few ultimately, shallow. You were getting a few shallow, you've been ladling casters in. I decided to go for far bank, near bank, ignore the middle. Been a bit of a tough day, Joe, hasn't it? How's fish on the fishing front? Ultimately. It's been quite tough. Now, what I've done here, I've, I've put you a black tip float on in. Oh, yeah, in well, water. I think you can't see. A it. guessing game. What's this, like a quiz? You've got to watch for bubble disappearing. Yeah. Isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah, but you've had a few of them big F1s, shallow. Yeah, yeah. Lovely fish. Yeah. Look at that. Floating Have you noticed how they're rolling now? They're, the um, they're definitely thinking about job, but they're not coming. Not thick and fast. They're not coming they? within striking distance, are they? Well, that is, uh, that's the nature of the beast, obviously, but we've had a good day and. We've had a great day. Good to catch up as well. Good to hopefully for you guys to see, like, how Mick obviously did that with the Feeder Masters qualification and his fishing recently. Yeah, looking forward to a bit more. Where of are we going to go next next time? So, where are we going to go, or this, what, yeah, where next, am I off to next? Next one of this. That's a good question. Why don't we try and find something different? Something different. Yeah, let's try and find a uh, oh. oh bubble disappear. Look, bubble disappear. It's going to be black float, an invisible float. This is wind's gone nice. It's like fishing with eyes shut. Um, well, let's try and find somewhere a bit unusual. I think I was going to say canal. But it might not be the right time of no, year. No, it's getting a funny time of year for naturals, isn't it? You've got to pick your, pick your battle, haven't you, with that? Yeah, I think you have, yeah. And I'd like to say, let's go somewhere that's not well trod and, and not a well trod path. Let's go somewhere where... Yeah, off the beaten track a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like See if we can't find a nice small fishery, packed with fish, and see if we can't catch a few. So, thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget yeah. to subscribe. Do you know this is my new fish video debut? Is that right? Yeah. Of course it is. Well, don't make it be your last. <laughs> and we'll... Uh... Well, everybody will want you back on because you've caught a few shallow, haven't you? Well, yeah. yeah. Only a few, though. <laughs> I know, yeah. I would hold it for to one bit. We're just catching a couple of F1s, but you've had to get your finger out, haven't you? It's been all Enjoying right. Enjoying it. But, yeah, good day was had by all. Fantastic fishery, Packington. Oh, beautiful. Thanks to John for looking after us, as he always does. Yeah. And if you fancy a trip here yourself, it, despite today's weird conditions, air pressure, fish feeding, breeding, not feeding, sunny, <laughs> wind all over. <laughs> uh, what's, there's a couple of other fishermen's excuses I could yeah. throw in. Um, you'll probably have a great day.